it's a great pleasure to be part of this wonderful event. Uh, and uh, I will try to uh, summarize what I think is uh, worth doing, at least for me. Uh, and um, it's a little bit uh, resembles the notorious five years plans which existed in the Soviet Union, which invariably ended in disasters. <laughs> Uh, uh, but uh, nevertheless, I, uh, it's, uh, you can still keep an illusion that something will come out of it. Um, OK, the first problem, there will be several un more uh, superficially unrelated problems. The first problem is the problem of the cosmological constant, which interests me for a very, very long time. Uh, and the problem is that you have, uh, as uh, everybody knows, is that you have uh, the infrared and ultraviolet scales, uh, and the ratio is huge. And there is a small discrepancy that uh, uh, the theory tells you that it's a UV scale, uh, which defines the cosmological constant. The observation tells you it's IR scale. So something has to be done. Of course, there's a you can escape to anthropology to uh, do this, to explain these things. And I have nothing really against it, uh, except that anthropology is extremely boring. <laughs> uh, but I don't have any animosity or some, uh, something like that. It's possible that it, it will be, after all, after all it's uh, the Avogadro number, which is kind of a, uh, 19th century analog of this problem. It has uh, some kind of pseudo-anthropological explanation. Anyway, uh, we will try something completely different. Um, uh, namely, uh, we will, uh, I will conjecture that there are, uh, there are uh, space times or backgrounds more generally, not necessarily geometrical. Uh, which are classically fine, no singularities, everything reasonable. Uh, however, uh, when you calculate a back reaction on those uh, uh, manifolds, you will get you get an infinite answer. And I will start with a very simple example. When you have uh, just constant electric field, or not constant, some varying electric field. Uh, and it's, there is a, the well-known Klein paradox or Schwinger pair creation or whatever, uh, which tells you that the system is unstable, that uh, when you uh, apply this field, uh, it is energetically favorable to create pairs. And um, as a result, you get the back reaction. You calculate the current, uh, and the back reaction will grow uh, linearly with time. Uh, and if you go beyond that, if you take into account this back reaction, the background will be eliminated. Uh, so uh, there is also an interesting scaling uh, which occurs uh, namely when you are close to the critical uh, value of field. Um, the vacuum energy acquires an imaginary part and therefore has a singularity. This is some quantum mechanical analog of the chop tube scaling uh, observed, uh, which exists classically. Um, uh, and uh, one of the questions is calc analysis. It's not easy. You, you have to, to sum a lot of logarithms and go to a lot of loops to calculate the precise uh, value of this imaginary part of energy. Uh, and uh, then we can actually go to uh, the case of gravity, having this previous case as just a warm up to, to see that the phenomenon at least may exist, that the quantum reaction destroys the manifold, the original manifold, and replaces this with something else. Uh, in this case, in the, first, in the case I discussed, it's just, it was just uh, the um, uh, absence of electric field. The electric field was screened out. And basically, uh, the hope is that the cosmological constant will also be screened out by the infrared effect. And one should expect that infrared effects are relevant because uh, it's, after all, the infrared cutoff uh, which, de de which determines the value of the cosmological constant. 
anyway, let's look at the gravitational example. Mm, and there, were, there are many others. So let's take the uh, Poincare Gilstrand, Pen Leve, excuse me, uh, Gilstrand uh, metric, which describes both decision spaces and black holes, uh, and which is physically very nice kind of uh, Lagrangian coordinates. Um, uh, and uh, as you see, it's very similar to the previous case. Uh, v plays the role of A0. Uh, and uh, the singularity in this case develops then the velocity, effective velocity tends to one, which means an attempt to form the horizon. And once again, one can show that uh, the vacuum energy acquires an imaginary part. Um, and once again, it's, there are some technical difficulties to be overcome uh, to uh, calculate it precisely. And in this case, it's even closer to the chop tube scaling, uh, so just the quantum version of it. Uh, now, uh, I, I shall not uh, go into kinematics and uh, other processes which should be taken into account. There are multiple cascades, very much resembling the cascades we have, uh, the direct cascade in the theory of turbulence, to which I will uh, come a little later. Uh, the, so this, this is the first open question. Uh, the second problem, uh, which is apparently unrelated to the first one, is that, uh, that we, we still don't have complete understanding of, at least it seems to me, gauge string, of gauge string duality. Uh, I think it is very important to derive it from the first principles. Uh, and the, you can formulate it as the isomorphism between words uh, and vertex operators. You can say that in the beginning it was the word, but then, uh, but then we uh, relate it to the um, vertex operators. Uh, and uh, I shall not go into details, obviously, but. Uh, it should be the vertex operators of the five of the at least five dimensional uh, uh, non critical or critical string, uh, and uh, these fifth dimensions should be warped uh, and the question uh, is why there is this uh, coincidence between vertex operators and uh, uh, and uh, single trace gauge operators. Uh, and a possible answer, uh, again, that's the open problem. Uh, nice music. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, is that uh, the word is equal to zero when inside the word uh, you have the Young Mills uh, equation, when you have the expression, uh, the expression. Uh, uh, Nabla, mu, f, menu, and so on. Um, and it's natural to try to, to equate such uh, singular words to the null states of, of string theory. And on some lower level, I uh, really saw that this uh, conjecture uh, works, but uh, have no idea how to move. Uh, there, are, there are a lot of technical difficulties uh, in moving further. But I, I, I hope that they are, uh, that one can overcome that. Um, so that is the uh, uh, my uh, second problem, which I think is well. Why we? Uh, it's, it is extremely important, I think, to understand the origin of uh, gauge string duality. In some, uh, it, it is. Uh, uh, I, I, I think in very, very often in in the literature uh, you see the statements that. Uh, Gauge string duality is simply in the ADS case, you have semi conformal symmetry in the bulk and it induces conformal symmetry uh, at the boundary, therefore, uh, this is the same. I think it's a very ridiculous logic. Um, uh, anyway, so the null states and the Young Mills equation is, is, is another problem. Uh, now, uh, let me move to the problem which is related to the previous one. And uh, 
this problem is that uh, one of the methods of uh, uh, comparing uh, gauge theories and uh, string theory uh, is uh, to examine the loop equations. But the loop equations are notoriously singular. The usual Wilson loop uh, is um, actually which measures the energy of the static particle, the interaction of the static particle, uh, is um, uh, not a very good, it's a complicated object. So there is an interesting, I, I want to point out that uh, there is an interesting object uh, which is related to the Wilson loop, which measures not the energy, but the radiation friction, uh, which is, uh, here I wrote the expression uh, for um, the second order correction on the Wilson loop. In the ordinary Wilson loop, it's the same expression, but uh, the I eps, I eta uh, is, uh, is not there, and you get plus I zero. Um, this, from, from here, you can de uh, derive uh, the classical Dirac uh, equation for the uh, dissipation, uh, for, for the radiation friction. And uh, if you, in the, at least in the second order, it seems that it's, uh, it, it's a good object, that maybe there is a loop special type of the loop equation for this object. So that's it. Now next, uh, next we have to, uh, the next problem which uh, we will attack in our five years plan is the theory of turbulence. Um, uh, here I want to stress that there is certain hope, uh, well, first of all, the, the basic thing in the theory of turbulence uh, is that uh, you have the so-called dissipative anomaly. Namely, uh, if you tend, uh, if you tend uh, viscosity to zero first, you get one result. If you first do physics and then uh, turn, and after that you turn uh, viscosity to zero, you get another result. And that's precisely an precise analog of how uh, axial anomaly arises when you, we introduce the cutoff, the ultraviolet cutoff. Viscosity in turbulence is the ultraviolet cutoff. There are, by the way, two scales also, and so on. Um, and uh, it is uh, possible that, uh, it's thinkable that uh, some progress can be achieved in finding the turbulent state, which contrary to the Gibbs state. In turbulence, we have not average, not say energy fixed, but flux of energy fixed. Uh, this flux states may be possible to describe by introducing the extra dimension uh, in the holographic spirit, which I don't like, but use some time. Uh, well, we don't have uh, much. Uh, in, in any case, uh, probably the scale which enters in the, in the Kolmogorov picture uh, could be interpreted as, a, as an extra dimension. That's another problem. Then there is a problem of two-dimensional turbulence in which there are many beautiful concrete questions. Uh, and we need now, the, the important question is uh, to, to, to see whether it's working, is uh, actually uh, uh, whether the three-point function uh, comes right. And uh, it, it is, I was told that it is doable numerically and maybe uh, experimentally also. Uh, so this is another uh, problem for, our entertainment. Um, and then I will make uh, in 40 seconds uh, some uh, suggestions uh, concerning the standard model. I, I think that uh, we uh, have the, the we may be starting to change our view on naturalness and fine tuning, etc. And one of the ways to um, think about fine tuning is to think of self-organized criticality. Turbulence is one example of such thing. And uh, in all examples of self-organized criticality, the ultraviolet cutoff is field dependent. So a first vague uh, suggestion is that uh, 
May, we, we, don't, we do not know how all, which ultraviolet cutoff enters in the standard model. There is no information about it. And uh, we probably should try to play a little bit with such models in which it is uh, OK. We don't play with such models. <laughs> Let me stop. There are many interesting problems behind that, after that. Uh, right. Just a couple of transparencies and everything will, would be solved. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, um, uh, the problem uh, is that um, uh, we, uh, I, I thought that it, it might be semi-legitimate not to think uh, that uh, SU2 cross U1 unifies uh, into some simple group, although it na would be natural to think so. Uh, but that there, is, there are two absolutely separate uh, groups. SU2 comes from one source, which we don't know, uh, and U1 comes from the other source. So then you disconnect. Uh, in, this case, in this way, you, you can say that uh, you have an extra parameter, the mass of magnetic monopole, for example. It's not related to the grand unification scale. It's just an independent parameter. And then we can uh, use the statement that uh, we have uh, uh, at very high coupling constant in compact QED in U1 theory, we have core confinement. On the other hand, it clashes with Landau pole and uh, which decreases the coupling, and it, which leads to the elimination of confinement. As a result, you have an interesting dynamical situation and some uh, metastab new metastable states, uh, 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 et cetera. So uh, that, that by di diversification, I meant uh, just that uh, you, dis you, you uh, abandon the idea of grand unification. Which I, I, I would agree it might be uh, distasteful to do so, but uh, why not to try? It's, I think it's not totally correct for the idea. Uh, All right. Thanks again, Sasha. So.